Hello everybody, and welcome to another part of the Bootlib Editor tutorial. I know it's been a little bit, I've been very busy uh, moving into my new place, and uh, you know, busy life, but you know, back, gonna show you guys how to create an assault wave and how to navigate the enemies through areas. Alright, so to start off, I'm gonna show you what's in here. I've pre-built stuff so I don't have to fumble through the the element page. So to start off, I'm gonna explain what an enemy dummy is. Alright. So this place, it's just a simple area that tells the enemy or tells the game to spawn an enemy there. Alright. You look down here you can see that there's an enemy type. Uh you can go through all the different enemy types here. Uh, by default, it is just enemy spot one, and if you're going to be using it for an assault wave, there's no purpose in changing that. Uh, the reason you'd want to change this is if you wanted to do a scripted spawn, to say have a bulldozer spawn within a vault or something. You would do something like this, type in bulldozer, just like that. Now when this gets executed, it will always spawn a bulldozer. Uh, but this uh, enemy will not pertain to the assault wave, so the assault wave enemies will not spawn from this thing. Other settings within this are spawn actions. These are just little actions. If I do this, see, he spawns in and he kicks. So that's how you do stuff like this. Well, they'll repel in and all that sort of stuff. For now, I don't want anything, so I'm just going to keep it as none. Uh, voice, uh, not really used. Uh, force pickup is if you want them to have a keycard or something. And team is if uh, you want them to be on a specific team. So mobsters are always mobsters. Law, or by default. So by default, if you set a default, it's uh, specified within the unit itself. If you want to override it to say have a cop that is actually fighting with the mobsters, so both a uh, gangster and a cop will not fight each other like they're usually behaving to, this is how you do that, like that. I don't want to change it though, I'm going to set it to default. So within a group, we want to have a set of three to four or if you want to have a little bit more, up to like six is what I've seen. Um, you want to pair those all with something called a spawn enemy group. So to pair them, we just go in, we click this button here, and we pair them. Just like that. At this point, if you want to make more enemy groups, we can just copy paste the whole thing, and they're paired. And you don't have to go and be like, uh, well this is... 6, 7, 8, and 9. So I need to go in here and click uh, 9, 8, 7, 6. There you go. Uh, if you just copy paste the whole thing, the connections will stay so you don't have to worry too much about those. So, other things in the spawn group are the amount that spawn in. There's an interval, so enemies can only spawn uh, from an assault weight of out of this every 5 seconds. If I set it to default or zero, zero, enemies will spawn out of this as fast as they can until they hit the spawn cap. Uh, so five is just a nice number, so that you know it doesn't look like there's people inside of each other. Then we go down here. We see all these little different options. By default, they're all set to off. And what these do is they specify what kind of group you want to have spawn here. Say you want to have a shield wall spawn here. You want to have uh, cloakers spawn from here. You know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, by default, I usually just click all of them on. I don't really care where certain things spawn. If you don't want shields to spawn in a certain location, uh, because they'll just sit in the distance and look at you with your shield, uh, just disable the shields. Uh, the most important one is this phalanx one, though. If you want a Captain Winters to spawn on the map at any point, you just set one spawn group, or multiple, but usually one, 
I had to send it to Phalanx. That means that uh, Captain Winters can spawn from this location, and he, from that, he will go and walk to a specified location, um, which is specified in this. Oh, nope. It is specified. SO action. There you go. Phalanx. Yeah, so they'll walk over and do their little huddle puddle right onto this. Special objectives, it's a later thing I'm going to show on, so don't worry too much about that, though. So that's how you spawn Captain Winters. I don't want him on, though, so I set him to off. I rarely have Captain Winters in any of my maps. So at this point, we have the enemy group, and we have the enemy dummies connected to the enemy group. At this point, this enemy group is connected but the game doesn't know to use this enemy group to spawn enemies. To add that enemy group, we use an element called enem enemy preferred add. What this does is we can go down here, hit the spawn group, and click that right there. That means that it will enable this and turn it on, and enemies can spawn from this group. Now that we know how to turn them on, we can do the opposite with an enemy preferred remove, and just it undoes does the action that this element did so it'll turn off enemies from spawning in this location that's very important for a uh, heist call like beneath the mountain where you will go and go to a totally different location if they didn't have an enemy preferred roof the when you go all the way up enemies would still spawn below and up top so removing enemies is very important all right currently custom built enemy preferred removes seem to have a glitch where they don't actually remove so if that happens don't stress too much it's just a glitch within the editor if you're watching this in the future that glitch might have been fixed all right so now that, enemy, um, now that we know how to spawn, make a spawn group, and remove and enable, or remove and add, this will work, but the game needs to know that there's an assault wave going on. Alright? So by default, the map is in stealth. Alright? And I, like I showed you in the first one, we need to set it to be loud. We do that with an element called an AI global event. Right here, we can set a bunch of different options. Uh, stuff like assault, besiege, blockade, hunt, blah, 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 blah. Um, if you want it to go right into assault, we do this. If we want an infinite assault, we do hunt. But by default, it's usually besiege. All right, so that's usually saying, hey, it went loud cops are spawning but it's not an assault yet I'm gonna set it besiege I hit it so police are called and just say that uh, cop called so all the blame does is it it just changes the text that pops up on your screen but if we call it doing an AI global event and that's all we did nobody would really spawn from this location because Spawning is handled by an element called difficulty. Difficulty ranges from 0 to 1. So if you want a couple enemies to spawn in, set it by any value over 1. And this value determines how many enemies will spawn in. So you start off a heist. For example, in some heists, uh, usually the newer heists have it automatically just set to 1. Some old heists like Bing Heist... You know why there's like five minutes of waiting around? It's because by default it's set to like 0.25 and then you open up the vault and it's set to like 0.5 and then do some things and it's set to 0.75, you know, ramps it up so enemies spawn more and more the longer the heist is. Right now I'm just going to set it to one so it spawns the maximum amount. But if we do that, cops will spawn, they'll have a little orange exclamation mark above their head and if you shoot them they'll have pagers so how to remove the stealth aspect we use a element called whisper state just set it to off 
That's what it is by default. And that's how you fix that issue. At this point, if we walk into this area trigger, it'll set off this and add an enemy group. And enemies will spawn from this locations right here. And I'm going to do one thing. I'm just going to do the dummy just like that. A one time bulldozer spawn will spawn here. So now that we know how to spawn enemies, uh, either scripting them or having them naturally spawn via the game's intuition right here, I want to show you how to disable uh, navigation areas so enemies or AI do not walk into the location. So say I have why did I type garage? Say I have like a big garage door right here. The heist, you start here and you drill this garage door and it opens up and then you can go inside. By default, I need to have, when it's opened up, I need to have it so AI can walk in and out freely, right? So I can just, I can do that of two, one of two ways, all right? I can do it with an AI graph which, if we look at this AI graph, come on. Why did you randomly select? There you go. So if you look at this AI graph, what it does is it allows access or forbids access to graph units. All right. So to just figure out a, gra a graph unit, you just click on the navigation segment and you have it here. If you do want it to have special names and you can just type it in right there but I do believe you need to rebuild the navigation for it to sync up here um, so if I don't want enemies to walk into this location when the door is closed we just hit forbid access to navigation segment 2 so now as you can see it's linked so if I execute this enemies will not walk into this area it's very useful, like I said, for when you come up to here, you start drilling into this. AI will not start walking through this door until you open up the, the garage door and you hit allow access to this. For now, I'm just going to keep it on forbid. But, like I said, there's one of two ways that are possible. Another way is using a thing called a nav obstacle. This one is a little bit more diverse on its implementations. If I use this AI graph and I disable this, it does stop enemies from walking in, but it also stops enemies from walking in from this side, this side, and this side, and this side. They cannot walk into this room at all. Alright? No matter which way it is. But what if we have it so there's a door here and we can just go all the way around. So we can walk in this area and walk in this area, but we can't walk through this doorway. But we can open up the door and then we can walk through this doorway. We want to have the AI be able to do all the same actions that we did. Walk into this room, walk into this room, not walk through the door though until it's opened. Using a nav obstacle, we can use some nav door blockers and set it up so we put the door blockers right where we don't want ai to walk right where the doorway where the door would be just like that and we go to this nav obstacle we hit add and we go in here now you look at this you're a little intimidated what the hell is id string blah 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 so the issue with the nav obstacle it doesn't um identify the 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 models that well the objects all right so to figure out what object is what because how am i going to figure out what any of these objects are it's recommended go into a heist figure out what they use if there's a door like um something that you want just go in and just reference it to how overkill adds it okay uh, that's what I did here. Door blocker 2. I know that this ID 2AB will be the correct object that I need. 
So now if I execute this, enemies will not walk in. And if I select remove, that'll remove that restriction so enemies can walk through just fine. I'm going to add that to this uh, obstacle. There you go. So just like that. Now, if I walk into that area, enemies will not be able to walk into this room and they will not be able to walk through this doorway. It's a little bit of a difference between the two. So I'm going to hit save, restart. We can launch into the map. And turn off editor units so we can see. We can walk in, walk into the area. And I'll say police detected a criminal. I'm going to turn on my sound. I do have my sound on. Just not playing for some reason. Now that we have that, enemies should begin to spawn. Ah, there you go. Okay, so, yeah, because I was in a navigation segment that uh, was disabled. They didn't understand what to do. So, yeah, now they spawn perfectly fine. They will randomly spawn within the group, so these four. And as you can see, they do not spawn from this one because it was a scripted spawn. But as you can see, if I walk into here and walk away, they will not chase me because they can't walk into this room and they can't walk through this doorway. If I remove and hit execute, you can see they instantly start trying to walk into this room because they're trying to path their way towards me. And if I walk up here, they won't be able to path their way towards me because, like I talked about before, they cannot access this room at all. And easy fix. Just hit allow access. And then they will begin pathing their way towards me. Now that they can walk through that door. Just like that. Simple as pie. So that was just a very simple explanation on how to spawn enemy groups, do an assault wave, and um, restrict AI from walking through certain doorways or certain rooms. If you always, it's always recommended, like I said before, to make assault groups. Just copy paste the whole thing, so you're not fumbling around. But just like that, with those simple set of elements, you can make a very simple assault wave and shoot cops for as much as you want. Alright. Thanks for watching.